morning. It's Jill and Chris from Boomer Tech Adventures. And today in this Facebook Live, we would like to take some time to talk about ways that we all can st stay more secure and protect our privacy when we're using our digital devices, whether it be a phone or a tablet, or in some cases, your computer. So Chris, what are some of the things that you personally do to make sure that you're as secure and your privacy is protected as much as possible when you're on the internet? Yeah. So I think one of the most important things to do is to, number one, use passcodes. And uh, also when you create passcodes, make sure that they're what's known as uh, strong passcodes. So let's talk first about um, why passcodes. Yes. To begin with. So um, one of the one of the key reasons to use a passcode, especially if you're on a mobile device, but certainly on all your devices, is it protects your device. Mm -hmm. It keeps uh, it. It doesn't guarantee because you still have to figure out what passcode to use, but uh, it makes it more difficult for someone to hack your device. To you know, take over your phone mm -hmm. or your iPad or your laptop. So that's that. That's one of the key things is to protect your device. Right. So again, we have to say it's never perfect because it's been in the news this week. Uh, the Jeff Bezos from Amazon. They think he was hacked, um, perhaps by person in Saudi Arabia and got all sorts of personal information. But he was using the WhatsApp. Um, app, which is supposed to be encrypted, so it's it's very interesting. So you, we have to be vigilant all the time, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, just kind of going back to uh, what we talked about um, previously in, in a previous Facebook Live, um, when you travel, um, it's your your device is constantly you know being observed, whether you like it or not. Um, I remember when they had the um, the Olympics mm -hmm. in 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 Beijing in China. Um, people that were traveling there, uh, as soon as their plane entered the uh, the airspace, um, people were reporting that their devices were were being compromised. Well, even when I was in, where was I? I think I was in Cape Town. South Africa, I got strange messages, um, which suggested that someone was trying to get into my device. And one thing about, I mean, again, just the passcode, why it's so important, this phone, somebody gets into it, they've got instant access to your email, to your social media, uh, to my your phone text, number. <laughs> your phone number. <laughs> it really is a portal. Um, to your personal life. Now I gotta give you this warning. I did have a person in uh, one of my adult ed classes and she indeed used your passcode, but unfortunately she had taped it on the inside of her case. Oh my. So, so somebody picked it up. Uh, Cause it's, you know, there's a lot of things to remember. So that's not the place to write down your passcode for sure. Yeah. So um, let's kind of stay on this. So. How how do you be, well? One of the things that we also recommend is that you do not use the same passcode for all of your accounts because if someone gets one, uh, it's quite possible yeah. that they would then use that for for your other accounts. So uh, how do you how do you keep track and what what are some of the what's some of the advice that we've actually read whether we follow well, it or not. not well and i have to admit that, that on on apps that don't have personal information i sometimes use the same password uh which happens to be my childhood phone number which i figure i'm the only one that remembers that uh because that was back in the time where you had a word and numbers uh my banking passwords are unique absolutely unique and my passcode is unique here for my um, passcodes to things like mm, the apps 
I keep in notes on um, either my iPad or my phone. Well, they're linked, so it doesn't, it's on both. And you can lock notes. And so there's another password you have to remember. But again, my banking passwords aren't in there. The only place my banking passwords are, well, I'm not going to tell you where they are. Oh, I almost, I, I <laughs> almost tricked her. Almost. Um, but it is important. Now, I have to tell you, I always keep my phone with the passcode because that it's always with me. And so it's easy, you know, you're in a restaurant, you put it down, it's easy to walk off and leave your device. However, my iPad, which rarely um, leaves the house, I'm not so good about keeping the passcode. But if I travel, I'm on a plane, then I put the passcode. So that's important. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this 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 surprised me, uh, but I, one of the pieces of advice that that I've heard recently mm -hmm. is keep it in a notebook in a secure place, like not a digital notebook, but actually write it down yeah. and you know put it in your under your pillow or under well, your mattress and you, or something like you that. You probably should tell somebody because you know should you unfortunately pass to the next realm. Uh, if everything's protected with the passcode and nobody can get in, then it's difficult for your um, trustees or your executors of your will to be able to access. So it's, it's complicated, but it is uh, certainly, bottom line, your phone, always have your passcode active. Yep, right? Activated, that's right. Don't, don't, don't turn it off, even, even for a minute. Um, so, there's, so there's your device. Um, but we also know kind of in this, uh, in this world of uh, things, internet, <laughs> internet enabled devices. Yes. Um, so many of us have um, networks in our homes, personal yeah. networks, and, you know, through modems and things like that. And those have passwords as well yep. or passcodes. They call them passcodes now because they're more than words. And um, it's tempting to just use the default password mm -hmm. that comes with it or to make up your own. And I learned recently, so pop quiz, what's the most popular password or passcode um, on the planet? I think it's one, two, three, four, five, six, depending on how, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, so you know, if someone's a hacker, it's like the first thing they're, they're going to try. try. They're going to, you know, they're going to pull up in front of your house, and if your network isn't password protected, they're going to type in one two three four or one two three five six. <laughs> and you know, if if you're out there and that's your password, change it. Change it. Um, the second most one is, is zero 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 zero. No. Zero 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 zero. <laughs> yep, yep, and people use that. Well, it's easy to remember. That's right. And, you know, you understand why people do that. It's, it's yeah. easy to remember, and there's so much we have to remember. Right. So the, so the advice, um, you know, certainly is that anything that's, that's enabled, um, you know, whether it's, um, you know, your digital assistant, you know, so your Alexa. Yeah. Or your Google Spot or whatever it may be. All of those ask for passwords, mm -hmm. and so use use one, make one up. Um, we're not going to go deeply into how to make one up, but the the best strategy that that I've read over and over again is to come up with a phrase that of uh, you know that you know, mm -hmm. and then select letters. Or letters and numbers that you can, you know, letters that yeah. you can turn into numbers and use those in that random phrase. And it should be at least eight characters yeah. long. And if it can use things like exclamation marks and number signs and things like that, um, use those. Use those. So it's so it is literally random. Yeah. And somebody wouldn't necessarily get. Well, that we beat passcodes to death. I think so. All right. I think so. So let's talk next about the Apple updates that we always get messages. Uh, you're, you know, you need to update your phone. Uh, you get to updates 
in uh, settings and then you go to general and if you look uh, under general you will see uh, updates so it's my understanding that it's pretty important to pay attention to those updates because often they include security um, updates Apple or any of the big companies, they want their customers to be happy and to keep coming back. And so in order to do that, the customer has to feel secure, has to feel that their privacy is protected. And so Apple and Google are always looking, checking their software and they do find bugs and they fix them. Yep. And that's what we get when we get that message yep. on update. Yep. And it's not just because of bugs. Um, what we know, I mean, if you kind of listen in the news, is that um, even gov governments are, they're, they're constantly trying to break into devices yes. in order to solve crimes or to get to the bottom of, you know, nefarious dealings. And um, Apple and the other large companies, they're, they're monitoring um, mm -hmm. the fact that people are trying to get into their devices and when they get a message because they're monitoring and when they get a message that um, it's been broken into or someone is about to break into their software uh, they immediately will try to try to patch that patch that hole or weak spot yeah so so that's, that's good so that's know. important yeah. yeah let me ask you when you go to settings general uh, software update one of the options is automatically update do you have that set on automatic? so so I do mm -hmm. uh, because I'm lazy um, but you know what I've noticed is that I'm not sure that it automatically updates or that it automatically lets you know that there's an update I've noticed that too and what I, I think it is if my phone is plugged in overnight plugged into the wall outlet uh, charging that most of the time it will update though i often will occasionally i shouldn't say often occasionally get notices well it failed to um, update so try again um, which i do um, other times um, i just go in and <clears throat> excuse me do it especially for the big systems updates when it goes from iOS 12 to iOS 13 and when we go to iOS yeah. 14. I don't think those are automatic because yeah, they, yeah. they um, I think they require you to be plugged into a power source because yes. it takes so long yes, it does. To, to do those updates. Yeah. So anyway, so our second piece of advice is that it's important to keep track of the messages that come in about the updates before talking your iPhone and uh, your iPad. Uh, if you have another kind of digital device, uh, you should be paying attention to any messages you get about updates there too. Right. The other thing about, especially the uh, the major updates, you know, so from 11 to 12 or 12 yeah. to 13. Um, one thing that I that I do is I do delay um, updating. Um, I do too. Yeah, at least until the first update of that update, update. because <laughs> there's always problems yeah so so if it's you know 13.1 i'll wait until i get a notice that 13.2 is ready because 13.1 often will have um have, have some glitches and things like that that um can be unpleasant surprises right. for people. and don't show up until millions of people update so right. uh it's the digital world Right. Also, um, just so you'll know, um, down below, our, our colleague Ed Brzee is, is posting um, some links. And one link I think either he has posted or will soon post is the Apple support link. Mm -hmm. And if you are interested in getting more granular about what bugs and fixes there um, uh, have occurred in each of the updates, Apple actually lists those under its support pages. I think he's also going to post a URL that uh, will be a giveaway about security, and you might like to that. It'll be a PDF. You can download it if you uh, like to have a piece of paper.
or you can uh, just keep it on your device and, and check back for the how-tos. So are we ready to move on to number three? I think so. All right. So location services, do you realize that? that? Well, the software allows different apps to track where you are. And you have options whether to allow that or not. So if you happen to have either your iPhone or your iPad with you, open it up, go to settings. Once you get to settings, scroll down till you get to privacy. And then when privacy pops up, you'll see location services. And it'll either say on or off. So if you tap there, then you get to more detail. Now, if you choose to have location services off, that means that nothing is tracking you, or at least that we know of. <laughs> the apps aren't tracking you. And, but that means things like maps won't work. Or if you have share my location, like I know a lot of uh, parents or spouses or friends, you know, they're traveling together. Well, where are you in Paris? And if they have the app uh, turned on off, they cannot find where their friend is. So mostly I keep it on all the time. Do you? I do. I do. And mostly, you know, for those reasons is, is that um, my, my device connects to my car so that I don't have to, yeah. you know, touch my phone. But uh, the, the Maps app actually is the GPS in my car. Yeah. So, you know, if I, if I don't <laughs> have it on, then I'm driving someplace that I don't, don't know. know and is. I don't have my Delorme map. Right. Then I'm, I'm lost. So when you go to um, settings, privacy, location service, you will notice there are some uh, other options. One is share my location. And if you go there, you can see uh, that you have the option to let other people know where you are. But below that, below that, there is a whole list and it's all your apps. And uh, when you look at it, you will notice over to the right, there are words. And it may say never, it may say ask the next time, or it may say while using. So for example, on the App Store, I don't see any reason why the App Store needs to know where I am. So I have chosen never. Uh, however, around me, which helps me find a bank or a restaurant, I have listed uh, while using. So we just want you to know that you have the options when you can use uh, or have on Location Finder. Now, one last thing. If you scroll all the way down through your list of apps, at the very bottom, it says System Services. If I tap that and um, I get a whole list, and if I again look down, I'll see significant location. I have it on right now. And what it does is it tells me specifically where I have been recently. So I have been in Topsom, Maine, Bath, Maine, Brunswick, Maine, and Pelham, Massachusetts in the last month. Again, you need to decide um, whether you want that on. It can be handy. But also, if somebody gets a hold of your phone, uh, your child or a spouse, or so they can check where you've been. So you got to think about that. So location services, you have or we have options on uh, whether we want our device and its software tracking us when we're using it. And again, some apps you really need to have it, like the Compass, like um, Maps, others you probably never need to give them permission. So something to think about, something to check out. All right, cool. All right. So how about the last one? The last is, one. Which is similar, This is it, but it's Find My. Right, so you know, our phones, we usually have them with us, but boy, is it easy to leave it somewhere. <laughs> I've done that. Yeah, well, do you remember there was a time we were doing a presentation and you couldn't find your phone 
and there were a hundred people in the room and they all had phones and they all looked the same. And do you remember what you did? I must have asked you what to do. Well, <laughs> and you went to find my iPhone and it would ping. And so you followed the ping until you found it. So there is an app called Find Mine. And Find Mine. Find Mine. Did I say mine? Yeah. Find My. And that uh, will allow you to find your devices. And it'll actually give you the map and show you the location. And then you have options. Uh, the options are to send a sound, uh, mark it as lost, or you can erase the phone. So if you've lost your phone and you're worried about somebody getting into it, from a distance you can erase every all the data. Now you say, well, how can I do that if I've lost my phone? Well, you have to have the app on another device. It could probably be a tablet. Whether it is an Apple tablet or I have a little Android here. Um, if I uh, go to the Play Store, uh, there are various apps that will find an iPhone uh, on an Android. And so I tried it out. And I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but lo and behold, um, there's a satellite view telling me where all my devices are. Now, if you don't have a tablet and can't download a, um, an app, if you go to a computer and type in iCloud.com, that takes you to everything that's backed up for, through Apple. You do need your Apple ID and your Apple password to get in. But there you will find an option to locate your device. And again, you can either have it ping or you can have it erase. So you probably want to have that password and passcode written somewhere where you can get to it. Because yes. if it's on your phone, that's not going to That's really not going to help. Yeah. So it is... Um, it is that backup, and I, I think especially for the phone, it's important that you have a backup that, in worst case scenario, if you need to erase the data, you can. Uh, in best case scenario, you just ping it and you find out that you left it in the car. So those are our four security th things. Four securities for this uh, session: uh, passcodes, updates, location services and find my. All right, cool. Now, next week, next Friday at the same time, we're gonna do part two. And we'll be talking about email. Scams. Scams. That probably take the whole time. Yeah, oh, yes. <laughs> and sure. um, social media. By the way, speaking very quickly of scams, there's a new one out. If you get a text that says it's from FedEx, ignore it, erase it, it's a scam. You do not have a surprise package coming. Nothing free? Nothing free. <laughs> All right. Well, cool. Um, so uh, as we're closing, yep. so remember we have the free giveaway. Yep. Is that right? It's down there on the, uh, on the comments from Ed. Uh, don't forget to like us if you liked us. Share with your friends. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel where we have lots of videos, how-to videos mm -hmm. um, for your for your devices. And make sure you visit our website, which is our our company blog, which has great thoughts. Uh, and a mostly lot of from, mostly from Ed and Jill, but lots of giveaways too. Uh, and again, I think Ed has posted. Um, all these URLs. So anything else today? I think that's that's it for now. So Jill, Chris, and Ed are saying bye-bye, and please check in next Friday. This video will uh, be posted so that you can watch it again or, again, share it. Thanks for stopping by.